This stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy or other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, uh, the prompter says it's tax day today. Oh, crap. Okay, well, we got to get that one sorted out. Make sure you do your taxes, kids. Hello, everyone. Actually, quick question. Is a custom-made championship belt tax deductible, Wyatt? I don't know. I, I, don't ask me. I'm avoiding the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> kidding. Kidding. No, kidding oh, 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 we'll never do Funny that. Joke. Oh, man. Well, folks, hello and welcome, you beautiful people, to VCT Americas. It's Monday, and we're coming at you live from the Riot Games Arena right here in sunny, gorgeous Los Angeles, California. Of course, I'm Golden Boy, and we're going to be co closing out the week here. we got some good people here. we got Douglas, we got Wyatt, and we also have Shazam here joining today. Shazam, <laughs> final day. I'm just throwing things all over the place. I have the dexterity of, a, of, of nothing. Uh, how are you glass. How are you doing? How, you having a good time this weekend, man? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting more comfortable. You know? yeah. so I'm still a big noob at this, but we're learning. Hey, you're crushing it, dude. And it's a <laughs> pleasure you. to have you here. The big brain of Shazam joining us on the desk today. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about what happened on this stage yesterday, because Brazil was looking for a stage one win, and up first, it was MIBR taking on crew. We came into this game, guys, thinking that MIBR stock were high as hell and instead we were proven wrong Shazam it was crew who walked away with the dub yeah it looks like new crew's new roster is really clicking together um as much as we talk about MIBR being solid in their roles seems like crew's got that figured out now yeah for sure and then of course we move on to Furia versus NRG again Brazilian team Wyatt looking for that dub but it wasn't going to come in the hands or at the expense rather of Demon 1 or Brazil <laughs> but they got matched up against NRG. I mean, what are you, you going to do? What are you going to do? Honestly, it's not even Brazil's fault. I'm going to cope. Because it allowed, they just they couldn't play, they couldn't practice, so they had to run the old stuff with the Phoenix, and they pl they played against NRG, who have just been playing nonstop scrims every single day. Chet won't let them leave the high rise apartments; they just scrim 12 hours a day. They come in against Loud, they beat them. Yeah, sure. Then they play Fury. Like I'm coping. It's fine. I think Brazil coping. will be fine. I don't. I, Loud, I think he's like off the. Loud will make it to Shanghai. <laughs> I think we've lost. Hey, Doug, how much are you Between. paying taxes today? <laughs> <laughs> Too much. That's a transition. <laughs> every time, every time someone says something, you don't agree. Hey, how much are you paying in taxes today? <laughs> All right. Mark Cuban's paying a lot. Anyway, let's go ahead, though, and talk about our current standings in the Alpha and Omega groups as we have crew on top with NRG 2 0 across the board. Pretty awesome to see crew up there for sure, Doug. I mean, you know, especially after the season they had last year. And on the other side, I mean, still the most shocking result Leviathan defeating Sentinels your Madrid champions in fourth in shambles maybe yeah I mean the fact that we only have five weeks and everything is just kind of going to be insane for a little while makes this really fun makes it really entertaining but you're right I mean it's it's surprises it's subverting of expectations every single week yeah it's been fascinating to see how these groups have continued to break down here but we're going to be closing out the day or the week rather with one final match just one just one to wet the palate get you ready for the rest of the week all right you got cloud nine versus evil geniuses and i'm quite looking forward to this one why because well for eg i think this is a team that's still trying to find themselves and for c9 i think we want to find out whether or not last week was you know like real <laughs> save for eg allow me doug everyone to cope Okay, yeah, yeah. you're going to cope? <laughs> oh, just no, one more time. One more coping. Just one more time. Yes, Again, please. listen, we love overreacting here. That's what we do. There's not a whole lot of games. Teams play one a week, so we freak out with what happened last week. And I'm not going to do that with EG because I thought that they were pretty impressive in kickoff. I liked what I was seeing. They had an abysmal week last week, but mm -hmm. that's fine. There's not a lot of data, so I'm not going to jump out the window and say that they're going to be trash for the rest of the season. I actually think they're going to put up a solid fight today. Yeah, I had a visual of you jumping out of a window yelling, they're going to be trash for the rest of the season. <laughs> As you're like, you're making your way down. Do you think he's coping too much, Shazam? Um, a little bit. I think <laughs> last, last week's match definitely like left a stain on um, my yeah. opinion on like EG and their performance. But uh, also, I think I might be biased. Oxy stocks are high for me. That's fair. That's fair. We're going to so. see Oxy take the stage in a little bit. It's going to be quite exciting here. But last week, we saw C9 pull out every stop possible to take down Leviathan. Let's go ahead and take a listen inside their comms for this uh, iteration, excuse me, of Open Mic. Absolutely punishing for Lev as they finally get their footing back here to come back in. Water, water. One time mid. They're going to go retake mid, boys. Yeah. Yep. On my wall, I'm gonna try and kill him if he breaks. We have B, we are good on B. 
be towards A side. Do you have a jump? Yeah. Can you jump from Walking up at Ness. Oh, pick this one. Yeah. You ready? Three, two, one. They smoked me off, they They stage one. Okay, pick my left. Hold my left. Hold my left. Just wait, guys. Just wait, guys. right on you, Eric. Yeah, yeah. Hold my left. Ready? Just walk out. Three, two, one. I'm gonna dart it. I'm gonna dart it with you. I'm walking up here. Yeah, go ahead. Wait, close to me. Switch, 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 switch. I just take, 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 take. Nice, yeah. I'm in. One spawn, one spawn. Two's here. On my ping. It's so far. Thank you, I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you. Watch out, three. Watch out, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Okay. It could go anywhere. Yeah. Tell me? Yeah. 30 seconds left. You don't want to walk out? No, you too. Yeah, can we push three? I'm gonna do a flash mark on the side uh, so they think I'm there. Should be back up. Could already have it. Go ahead. <clears throat> Heaven one. one. Viper. Are they? You are they? Both. I'm there. I'm silenced. Go screen pass. Screen pass. Screen pass. You have a mobile blind angel. Oh my blind angel. I love you. Is it? Die! Oh my god, it fucks the job, my team! 16, 16. I just missed my knife. Different start, different start, different start. Just come, 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 come. Viper B. Come in, you're close. Yeah, I'm close. Three, two, one. Four, 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 four. Blur him. There's ten, I'll door for you in a sec. Uh, three more. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. raise, 81 raise. Heaven, heaven, heaven. I'm not picking. I'm picking with him. I'm buying, I'm buying, I'm buying. I'm buying, I'm buying, I'm buying. Raise is one, I hit him. He has rocket on plant, rocket on plant, rocket on plant. Yeah. Out of charges. Under. Just wait it out. You guys have more than enough time. <clears throat> doors are closed, doors are closed. He only has one Viper Molly for the bomb. They could make a play, okay? The Viper could be anywhere. I'm going close to you now. Is it Terry here? I'm not getting hit by it. It could be tree. Okay. I'm next, I'm next. He went cat, he went in the cat, he went up to tree. Raise his low. Both. That's one HP. We win after that. That's the game, man. Uh, that's half a top, guys. Molly missed that Molly missed. Molly missed. Last player standing. Last player standing. No! And that gives us the perfect segue to talk about Cloud9 because after they failed to qualify for Madrid, the team made some changes and it worked out quite well for them. And Doug, I, they picked up a win against Leviathan, who just picked up a win off of Sentinels. So you got to feel pretty good if you're a C9 fan right now. Yeah, I think especially given the context of what happened with Sentinels, the game was was messy, right? That ascent game went on five, six OTs, however many it was. I feel like I got flashbacks from watching those uh, those highlights, but. <laughs> I, there's reason to be excited, right? I think there's a lot of upside. Rooney's the truce. Moose had a really awesome debut uh, with Cloud9, and I think there's there's a lot of things to look forward to. Yeah, yeah I think there's a, a large amount of confidence that comes with winning matches that you might not have expected to, like yeah. when the season started out. Mm -hmm. And to carry that on, you just feel good. You feel good going into the next match. Um, that momentum carries forward, and I feel like they're going to be extremely confident going into this match. Yeah, as they should, right? The new pieces have been working. You see Moose there putting in a lot of work for this team. Rooney, uh, you know, stepping it up big time too i think it gives us an opportunity to talk about him because he comes back to the squad wyatt this was a player who played with c9 last year gets removed from the lineup they kept jake and then when they removed those pieces like whippy and jake they brought rooney back in but we were seeing the value that he brought to this team man and those sheriff killed oh boy that was nuts both roster moves were a big time firepower upgrade for this team. And yeah. it was so evident in this game against Lev. Because listen, if there's one thing Lev obviously do have, even when they're playing a scrappy game like that, the team plays messy. I mean, they still have Ospots dropping like whatever, 30, King dropping 30. They have firepower. And C9 were able to match up with that. Rooney was getting so many big kills. Like you're seeing with the Sheriff here, but Flanks like this, the precision with the rifle, the first bullet accuracy is really sick with this guy. And if he can keep performing like this, he'll be good to go. I think the fatal drawback for him is sometimes he kind of goes too crazy playing for the clips. But if he's going to hit every clip and make a montage from a yeah. game, then you're set.
Yeah. He maybe yee haws a little bit more than he sh than he should. <laughs> he goes <laughs> he a little bit. He yees a little great. bit more than he haws, you know? <laughs> well, I, I do think, as we have seen him play and we've seen him develop, I know it's only been one week, but I can't help but wonder, like, how much of him feeling a little bit more loose mm. and a little bit more comfortable is due to the fact that he's not primary calling anymore. That is Vandy who's doing it. He had a lot to figure out when he was playing for Cloud9 last year. It was his first time on a uh, Tier 1 team. He was calling for the team. There were all these pieces that were put together, and you, you just kind of wonder... The job is a little bit easier now. It yeah. should be. I wonder how his performance will continue over time. No, definitely. I think why I talked about a firepower upgrade, but I think the biggest thing for them was probably um, bringing more focal players into the team. Uh, Rooney, he was an IGL. I, I'm sure he's given a lot of input and ideas and stuff. Mm -hmm. Same with Moose. I, the mm -hmm. times I've played with him, he's also pretty vocal. And so when you have a lot of players like that that are willing to take space, take initiative, and make the plays when the opportunities come, uh, it makes it really easy for the team to just click. Yeah, and we'll see if that continues forward for Cloud9 today. But for now, though, let's check it in with the man himself, Van Silly, who's got the squad standing by. What you got, Vance? What's up, brothers? <laughs> moose, 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 can I come have a question with you, please? So, your debut was last week, and I remember I saw on social media that was like a highlight reel of Alexis just going crazy and stressing out, and it seems like she was losing lives watching your match. How did you stay so calm? Because you were like, your shoes were off, like Moose was on the loose, but also your dogs were on the loose. How do you stay calm? Special teams, special players, special players. All right, GB, let's pass it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> just it's too much okay well you know <laughs> works there I'll, we'll see if the dogs are out again today uh, i'm sure that they will be and uh make sure we bust out the febreze in any case though all right c9 of course looking to continue that week one momentum but let's go ahead and flip the script a little bit here and talk about evil geniuses because unlike c9 who wants to think profoundly about that victory they got over leviathan shazam EG would like to move on from their defeat last week. Yeah, um, that was a rough one. That's one, like, sometimes you look at a match and you think, do we even talk about it or are we just scrapping everything and, like, rebuilding? You know, yeah. I, they, they picked Icebox. It was a completely different comp from the one they ran previously in kickoff. So I wonder what they'll bring today. Do you feel like there's an identity problem that's happening right now with the team? Yeah, I'm. they had, um like, pretty good success on Icebox originally, so I wonder what was going on behind the scenes for them to, like, swap that comp and then reintroduce something else, and I wonder if they're going to just continue to experiment and yeah. figure it out. Yeah. Do you think it's because of the deadlock being a bit one-dimensional? Like, after playing it a couple times on that map, they just feel like other teams are going to be able to counter that? Yeah, I definitely think a comp like that has a shelf life, and when you've reached that limit, you got to explore, like, your other options. And then you can even just, like, reintroduce it back later on. Like, you know, teams aren't usually looking that far back to prepare for these matchups. Yeah, that's a really good point there. Uh, but of course, so Giacomo, rough week last week as we talk about, uh, you know, what he was able to do, right? He had, as we mentioned, the deadlock, but you always lean on this guy as, you know, again, the ace of this team, Doug. He's the firepower uh, and, and, and in some cases, even the brains uh, for a lot of the thought and a lot of the planning that this team makes here. You're going to be looking up for Jog to step it up big time this week. Yeah, he, I mean, he's going to have to. He was uh, effectively non-existent uh, last weekend. And I do wonder... Which is rare for him. Yeah, I mean, it's incredibly rare for him. I do wonder, too, about the move away from the deadlock because it wasn't like a comp that had been seen a ton of times. It wasn't like they had been beat on it a ton of times and there was a need to move away from it, right? If I if memory serves me correctly, they only ran it once that we saw. They won, or it was super close. And then they moved over to the jet. So I wonder, like, what was the impetus for that, right? Like, why make a change like that? Um, I also think we can have these conversations about comps and things like that, but the truth is, it's Jogamo. He's a world-class duelist. You know that what happened last week has to be an anomaly just because of what we know about him as a player and the team uh, that they've been able to put together. So it is almost better to look at that and go, yeah, let's just forget about mm -hmm. what went down last weekend. We know we're better than that. Jogamo knows he's better than that. And it's kind of easy to be able to put that behind you. Yeah, and also, I mean, you got a C9 team that I think feels like there could be a weakened EG that's going to meet them on stage today, Shazam. Yeah, they're probably feeling good and knowing that EG kind of got beat down last week. Yeah. That they probably got an easier time. I might give Jaw the same excuse I gave Bustio. You know, it could have been an off day. That's yeah. true, man. You don't, yeah. you don't see him play like that normally. So it's like all the that. XEG guys just had an off day on the same weekend. <laughs> it was like everyone went negative except for Demon One. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Yeah, actually, what you know, I mean, I mean, it's Demon yeah. One. So yeah, you know, it kind of makes sense there. I mean, look, there's a lot that we could pick apart as we get ready for this matchup. But for now, though, we want to hear from the players. We got Jog who's standing by with Van Silly once again. All right, so EG walking up. Jaw, please, can I have a word with you? 
Joss, so last week it was a little bit of a rough start to start stage one. What's going to change this week here that you're going to do that's going to tip the scale in favor of a victory for EG? Yeah, I'm going to lean back this time and I'm going to hold W, of course. Lean back, hold W, and pass it back to GB. Let's go. Good luck. Thank you, man. <laughs> I hate how much fun Van Silly yeah, is he's having. Getting silly. He's, he's enjoying getting silly. He's putting the silly in his name quite a bit. I don't like this. <laughs> okay, we got to put a stop to it. We don't have fun. On we this don't have show. fun. Let's ever. make that clear. Yeah, let's talk about stats. I'm kidding. We, 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 we shall not. We but we will talk, talk about, about a player, though. Actually. Hey, what? We are going to talk about stats. Actually, okay. yeah, you're right. Transitions. <laughs> Transition. How's your taxes? Anyway, all right, guys. Well, let's go ahead and dive into nature here. This was probably one of, this definitely was the standout for this team last week. Shazam, I think that you're going to be leaning on him again to kind of just carry that energy forward, carry that momentum forward from last week. No, definitely. He played extremely well. I think it's always good to come from the IGL. I feel like Nature's always been a player that has been consistently good. Even if he hasn't had like the success you expect out of some of these players, mm. that it, it's coming for him. Yeah, I think hey. that it goes without saying that if he continues that, right, this will they will give this team a lot of confidence, Doug, I feel, if the IGL's fragging the way that it is. Yeah, I think a thousand percent. When you compare the series that we saw last weekend against what we saw during kickoff, other than Nature, who is literally the only bright spot mm. uh, in that performance, everything else was night and day. You think about the first time we saw them play Derek. We were talking about Derek is back. Holy smokes. The guy's clutching. He's 1VXing. I mean, the, he's the truth. We knew what Dragomo was going to be. And none of those things were there this past weekend with the exception of Nature. So, yeah, there's, again, really good reason to think if Nature is going to continue to do his thing, the rest of the team will follow. Yeah, it should. Theoretically, theory. right? I mean, theory. that's the hope. That's the desire. We'll see, of course, if nature can pull that off again for this squad. And I do believe that we are going to be walking into a competitive matchup. I don't know why. Sun tells me my gut. Now, this is going to be a good one. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. But before we get into today's match, I just want to give you all a quick reminder that tickets are still available for a few days in Stage 1. You can come here, hang out with us, vibe out. It's a good time here. Nothing beats the experience of seeing your favorite teams compete live and in person. And most importantly, to sweeten the pot for you wonderful people, we got exclusive swag. You can't get anywhere else. Just right here. And thankfully, we have a real fun guy who wants to go and break it all down. We got Van Silly over at the merch booth for a closer look. So we're hanging out here, sorry, at the merch booth with Mariah. Mariah, uh, what's been going on here? I see that there's some hot commodities like the Tacti Bear that we had from last year, but there's some new items. So what's really selling so far at the merch booth? Um, I would say our wingman is going of the course. fastest. Yep. Um, everyone has been asking for him for a really long time. So now that he's here, everybody just wants to get on that right now. We also have our windbreakers and mm. we have our zip up hoodies. I am wearing both of them currently. They're very cool. Uh, would recommend. If I understand this correctly, though, you cannot buy this online. So this is exclusively here at the Riot Games Arena. Yeah, that's right. So do you have any left in Excel or is it like until stocks go out? Because I, I need to find some time to come back here and buy some too. Yeah, usually when stock runs out, um, we don't normally know when they're going to come back in. So I would try to grab it as soon as possible. Okay, so please keep one aside for me though. Toss that a bit. But actually, if we're looking down over here, I was actually intrigued by this hat because I see Ethan, I see Crashies. Is this really only 20 bucks? So it's not this hat specifically, but you can. Boo. I know, I know. <laughs> but you can get a hat and get it signed under meet and greet. So yeah, I'd grab it. Okay, so show up for that, buy a hat. And if you actually do want to come here at the arena, make sure you scan the QR card at the bottom because we still have tickets for sale now for stage one and for playoffs. Thank you, Mariah. All right, well, with the VCT America's production team has been working hard testing and developing segments for 2024, and it's time to unveil our brand new game that's unlike anything else that the world has ever seen. It's called Rad Lives. Completely original name as well. Look at that. GB, that, that sounds a lot like another game that uh, ad libs is that not at all never, never heard, heard of it a day in my life Ooh, i've never heard of that copyright game i don't <laughs> think i on stream. i don't think that's how that works all right we, we made this up completely on our own so this is how <laughs> this is going to break down all right we've got some uh, we got to fill in some blanks right on this screen and then when we're done we're going to reveal a valorant themed story and i hope you guys are ready to get your brains working here because you got a lot of yep. a lot of stuff to do yep. so we got some time on the clock i believe uh got a little timer this there it is. Timed? Go. There you go. Start. Where? All right. Where? Uh, don't worry. I'm going to yeah, take my time and just moving. get these for you guys. Give me the oh, man. My back hurts so much. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> I'm breaking oh. stuff. What's the first don't. one? Oh, I need God. a platinum player. Stat. Oh, That's a not... knife. This Easy. wasn't 
Stop here. breaking you, things, you Doug. Easy this? choice. Here you go. I don't know how we got this. Here you go, guys. Oh, I'm going so slow. You move. Get those thick thighs moving, Jimmy. Object. Yeah. You got. Me personally, I have two of the goats. He broke the thing. Guys, we have two minutes and thirty seconds. Did I really break it? No, I fixed it. We have two thirty. That's more than enough time. Like, yeah. What do you, I, are you doing fun. object? Yeah, I got You got shit. the object? Listen, you, Doug, pick Don't a landmark. Move. Use my pack. I'll get the uh, adverb. It's quite wide for you. <laughs> okay. We have landmark, what? we have adverb. We Lats have... are looking good, JB. Yes, yeah, thanks, guys. Stop I've moving! Got it. Uh, oh, I got the game shot. That's a thing. Here, help okay. Me out. All right, you got help adverb? Me help me out. Help you. All right, Mount Rushmore. Need me that's a landmark. Yeah. Doug, oh, okay. Uh, I mean, sure. Well, then, Doug, put this one there. Adverb. Adverb. Quickly. Okay, so we have chair. We got Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. Very American, Doug. Quickly. Quickly. <laughs> Very American on that one. Uh, Love this that guy Jimmy. definitely. Animal. Get those calves moving, buddy. This guy definitely wants to get his taxes paid oh, over that. that Mount Rushmore. Am I right? <laughs> okay. Um, wait, what are you no, doing, Doug? Nothing like warming up to the government. <laughs> uh, what, which one are you doing? Supple. 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 All right. I weird. just picked one choice. that was <laughs> There you go. New one. Oh, oh, Shazzy, new one, too. Come anymore. on, Shazzy. Same player, same object. You, you, are you doing number? <laughs> I've got the number on lock, yeah. All right, make are sure you. you number? What do we have so yep. far? What uh, do we what have so I'm far? I'll do the other number. I have right, the, there's multiple numbers. Uh, I do have the number, which is 3,123,123.567. That is obnoxious. That is just rude. What? I got to read that. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm, you know, I don't know <laughs> things. Exactly. This is punishment for you going so damn slow right now. <laughs> oh, You're oh, trying to screw us, <laughs> oh, oh, I will never do that. Oh, my uh, back. Oh, dang. Oh, <laughs> oh snap. What do we. Uh, uh, we got no region. teamwork here. We got region. We region? Have, oh, I'll pick that one. Here, ma right vanity I'll pick, down. Uh, the, me personally, I'm going for the worst right vanity. Uh, Valorant vanity, region. And that would be Europe. <laughs> there it is. Wait, did you put city name Europe? It's no, not a city no. name. It's a no. It's a region. Okay, I'll put city, city name. You are Europe. cooked. What about you? Are cooked. Same object, same, same weapon. I don't know what the object or the weapon is. The Turtle? object is oh, a chair. Chair. And the weapon is an operator. Choir. Okay, we have one um, more. So just write down operator. Operate. Okay. What does that say? Does that say Austin? Austin. Yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. I see where I see what we're doing here. We actually operator. have plenty of time. And there it is. Hey, right. we're, we're exactly, we're that's what I'm no saying. I'm we're sorry, doing fine. I'll, I'll... Same weapon. You see, operator. you guys are out here just ragging on the elder, you know, just, uh, hey, I got a bad back, you know, <laughs> got a messed up hip, you know, my, you my a leg. bad hip, too? <laughs> I don't know, honestly. <laughs> we'll find out. All right, there it is. And that was okay. perfect timing. So we did it. Look at that. What, what did they do? Hey, we nailed the totally timing. Fine. Right. Yeah, why are we Can getting... Can you play the air one sound earned? effect instead? All right, so let's go ahead. Hey! <laughs> let's go ahead and reveal what the... Radlib says, and I shall read it. <clears throat> Vanity stepped off the plane to Shanghai with one goal, to raise the master Shanghai chair. That and visit the Mount Rushmore. He scrimmed quickly to get this chance, spending days and nights away from his loyal turtle operator. After spending 3,123,123.567 minutes a day in VOD review. That's actually a lot. Poor guys in the dungeon. They finally felt supple about facing their opponents from Europe. Vanity wanted to put the humiliation of Masters Austin in the past where they became a meme after... <laughs> the hell does that say? All right. <laughs> Team kills. <laughs> He needed this win. He needed to come home with that master's chair and do it all for Operator. Well, I think we nailed that one. Well done. Uh, that was I, a good rendition, GB. What can I, I say? It was a good speaking. I have Very a, dramatic. Yeah, no, that's I why I pay him the big bucks. I try to add a little bit more, you know, a little bit more pizzazz to the proceedings here. You know I think you nailed it. Thank you ten so out much. Of ten. I appreciate it. How do we think they did? Uh, horn or buzzer? What do we think? How was the Mad Lib? Because I think it was actually... Rad lip. Rad lip. See? Oh, oh, see? <laughs> Just got sued. Never heard of that a day in my life. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, our coaches are ready for map selection. So let's go ahead and find out where we're headed today. And it's probably Mount Rushmore. Howdy, guys. Welcome. As you know, teams were decided via coin flip. C9 will be team A. EG will be team B. C9, you will have first map ban. Uh, ban Breeze. C9, ban Breeze. EG, what would you like to ban? Ban Bind. EG, ban Bind. And you have first map pick. Pick Lotus. C9 pick Lotus. And what side would you like? Uh, attack. We would like attack. EG select attack. And what map would you like? We pick sunset. EG pick sunset. And would you like attack or defense? 
Pick attack. C9, pick attack. And you have one map ban. Uh, ban icebox. C9, ban icebox. And you have one map ban. Ban ascent. EG ban ascent. Decider map will be split. And you have side select. A defense. C9, select defense. All right, best of luck today. And there you can see what we got lined up for our map selection. And uh, I mean, I, I think that this matchup, it, it's really just going to be a matter of who's coming out hot out of the gate here. And then that kind of sets the tone and the momentum of it, because it does feel like both of these teams really do ride those you know, the emotions uh, a bit more when they're on stage, Doug. Yeah, and again, like we were talking about earlier, the emotions could not be any more different for yeah. these two teams coming into this series, right? Like, it's such a drastic difference, and I think for both of these teams, if you really want to be able to focus on what's before you, you kind of have to forget last weekend in its entirety. The win and the loss, you just got to focus on what's happening now. Yeah, so we got Lotus, Sunset, and I believe last one was Split, if necessary. Anything that stands out to you guys in these map picks? And there is something. Oh, and it speaks to the point that you just made, GB. Oh, gonna, what was that, bro? Off that one. You're talking momentum. Ooh. Last week, the attack side for EG on Lotus was actually really good. Mm. That's where they were super competitive in that game. It was the map that Nature was able to pop off on. Viper's obviously very, very important on that map. Being able to work through A, get space in that area, find good timings. He was going crazy. I think they were really competitive against C9. I think this is a good opportunity for them to come in and get the momentum, GB, as oh. you were saying. Okay, I like that. Do you think that's a, a, a real thing that he just said, or is it just more Wyatt coping? No, I think I agree with that. <laughs> I think what you said also shows in how the veto went down last week. Both teams picked Icebox, and both teams got destroyed on their map pick. Mm. Um, and so here, neither team picked it. They floated it. I think C9 was the one that banned it. And so it seems like they're kind of just scrapping whatever happened last week. And yeah. focus on what's what's ahead of them, which I do find to be quite fascinating, considering that you know every single uh, uh, game, every single match that we play here has a ton of weight. I mean, we keep reiterating it, but it is important to note, sure. right? The championship yeah. points that these players are playing for. Yeah, and again, with Shanghai being what everybody is fighting for, you only have five weeks, you only have five matches, you've got to deliver. And I think because of that, there's no time to kind of let things cook and figure out kind of what works or what doesn't. You have to make changes and you have to make adjustments. Almost instantly. Yeah. It does feel, Shazam, like uh, a lot of these teams are coming into this with a, you know, a, a little bit of a desperation, if you will, just leaning on things that they think will work for them. And, and I, I'm curious to get your perspective on that. Yeah, there's a lot of weight in these in individual matchups. So I think they're taking it week by week. Yeah. People always ask, like, why are teams losing their own map picks? It's not until you really match test them that you kind of figure out what maps you're good and weak on. And so that's why you're going to see week by week, these teams probably just rotate their map pool completely. Yeah, well, we got a little bit before we start the game, as you could see right over Wyatt's head. Uh, so, it's, oh, on the screen. Oh, my God. It's amazing. I'm, I'm so glad yeah. I caught him with that. Hey! <laughs> well, let's go ahead and get into some predictions. Chat, you guys can participate, too, because we love you so much. Uh, Real what? moment, not comedy <laughs> that was me that being happened. stupid <laughs> wow. what are you guys and i'll be for? stupid again oh potentially boy. me personally eg okay eg i've gone with eg i'm writing off last week to some extent yeah i like that they're starting on lotus attack here i do really think genuinely it's a great map for them to really get in the swing of things take control of this series and also i'm just with your point i think jojimo just had a rare trash game and that doesn't happen Often by any means. So. Okay. EG, the song okay. in the air. I like it. Shazam, what you got? I'm going with C9. Ooh. I'm not entirely confident on this. I feel like it'll still be a close game. But uh, You got to give me a number. You think it's a 2-1? Probably a 2-1. Knowing Emmy, um, worked with him last year when we were playing on G2, and he likes to put a lot of effort into prepping, mm -hmm. uh, anti striding and I feel like he's not going to overlook anything EG does. Oh, okay. I like that perspective. I'm feeling rebellious and inflammatory. <laughs> So I'm gonna argue. It's a Tuesday. With, I'm gonna argue with. But it's Monday. I'm gonna argue with both oh, yeah. of them. Oh, and I'm gonna come pick on. both teams at the oh exact same God. time. It's Cop not because shitty. I don't have an opinion. It's because I wanted to disagree with whoever went before me, and you guys picked both, so I had to disagree. with That's both. fair. That is and fair. So, Good news is I'm going with E G. I feel. I feel <laughs> so. You know, I, I, my, my gut's man. been really good for the last few days. You know, I've been making some good calls behind the scenes. All I'm saying. Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. I the swear streets you have been guys. talking. <laughs>
<laughs> we'll see what happens, folks. But this is going to be a fun day of Valorant. That goes without saying. And, of course, we're going to close out this week the only way we know how with some more great games with some excellent teams. We got Cloud9 facing off against Evil Geniuses. VCT America starts right now. Protocols to make them think twice. Rooney with three. A second one that's going to be a bird. And he gets the ace. EG, they're like a, a mystery team, you know? They could be good, don't know much about them. Everyone can expect us to get better week by week. Obviously, we know to expect from Jog Emo, but the rest of them, up in the air. Quite annoying with these doors. Nature finally gets the pick. A second one Nature. there. Nature! A third! And he gets the ace! They're an innovative team, is what we like to call them. And they uh, make new team comps. So think fast and then look at their comp and just analyze it with the time you have and as fast as possible. Doing a lot of damage here on to C9, but Foxy still gets a pick. Another flash out through the smoke. Foxy gets a second one. Pink shells out. Fennedy holding the sight as players of Leviathan are falling down. Everyone else, right? I think everyone else expected Leviathan to win that match. So it was a huge win for Cloud9. You know, we're still building team synergy and stuff like that, and we're only going to get better from here. Right, Games Arena, it's time to get this show started. Let's make some noise and introduce your first team, Cloud Gotta get to the final, take all of my idols and turn them to rivals. It's all another man, a trophy is vital. Game time, bet I'm coming in clutch. No hang time, man, they can't keep up. The game's on the line, seconds on the time. Who can't fight? It's gotta be us. Better under pressure, go ahead and let it fall on me. I'm destined for it all, you better call on me. They say what doesn't kill you, make you stronger. All that pain, it made me to a monster. And their opponents, your evil geniuses! I wasn't ready for uh, Vansilli to do the twirl, but he did it. He committed. <laughs> Bless that man. <laughs> All right, here we go. Cloud9, evil geniuses. Both teams that are currently sitting in, you know, I would argue, the middle of the pack here in VCT Americas and trying to find ways, Doug, to punch above that weight class, get into the conversation a bit more, and start yeah. to really build up a pathway, a reasonable pathway for them to make it to Shanghai. Yeah, I would agree. I think this is a really good matchup because of the reasons that you just mentioned. I also think it's fun because I don't know that they know much about themselves at this point. I think there are so many questions that have been unanswered about what the yeah. rosters are capable of. Like, it's only been one week with Rooney and Moose, and you can make the argument about honeymoon period, whatever. The truth is, the Sage is a honeymoon. It's five weeks. It's not like you have a ton of time to go through the ups and downs of what works and what doesn't, right? So maybe it is a honeymoon run. That's very okay. And you would imagine going into this, the Cloud9 are a pretty big favorite just if we are going off last week if we are going off the fact that we're looking at Lev they beat Lev and then Lev beat Sen if you're doing that whole thing transitive problem exactly yeah. now I'm not saying that's the truth but I'm saying that's you know kind of the face value way to look at it and so going into this EGR Definitely quite the underdog, but I do believe that was 
a very different web that we saw last week. Cloud9 did not have to face the web that can beat Sentinels, right? Yeah, I think that um, even even though they beat a love that was seemingly more disconnected, I feel like that confidence plays a huge role mm. um, going to this matchup. Like both these teams, like you said, are middle of the pack. They have to work extremely hard to figure out. There's not a lot of room for error. They need to deliver. What? You're wrong, and I disagree. With you. <laughs> and here's why. I didn't say I believe that. I was giving a narrative. You're still wrong. <laughs> Pop. I think this team, after a weekend like that. They cook, right? They think things through. They figure out what's going on. If there's any coach that I look after a loss like last week and go, I have faith, they're going to they're gonna figure it out. I think it's Potter. And I, the truth is, we've also seen what EG are capable of. So I would strongly disagree with you on feeling like I literally Pot9 credit EG. High. We, don't, I know, we but agree. You went the other way. I was giving you a narrative. <laughs> I was literally providing a narrative. I told you. I, I agree I with you what you're saying right now. I disagree with that too. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, I believe in EG. <laughs> uh, uh, wait a minute. You, you know. Yeah, you you can't keep doing that. Out. Hey, I can this guy's throwing stones and he copped out. He didn't even give a pred. See, Shazam, this is what we got to deal with. You know? It's like. You can't change it now, man. <laughs> that's, that's right. He can't change it now, but yeah, he right. definitely is. Oh. You're not seeing this on camera, but he is definitely changing his prediction. Uh, to what? I don't even think he knows. In any case, so, yeah, no, but you guys are, are, are right, despite the, the, the conflict. <laughs> you guys are, are right just about, like, about Potter and what she could potentially be bringing to the table. Coach Jimmy, what he could be bringing to the table. There is a lot here that can certainly play a factor in this game. It's not just, you know, the 10 players on the stage are always going to be those intangibles. As we jump in, though, into the age and select, and we start to see what we get here for map number one, I'm not expecting anything too crazy, but I do hope, at the very least, that, you know, for EG, why we, we see some, some cleverness because they have those players to be able to pull that stuff off. Yeah, they showed a great game plan on the attack last week. They were very good. Nature was excellent on the Viper. Lotus, at this point, though, it's kind of a, it's kind of a figured out map. It's yeah. really innocent territory. We just haven't acknowledged it yet. We haven't embraced it. Everyone's pretty much playing the exact same thing. The only difference sometimes being the initiator, even though right now, Fade, in my opinion, is the best initiator. Some of the teams are playing Sky, but yeah, the map kind of solved with, with the agents. Do you agree with that, Shazam? Yeah, I agree. I think Viper is essential on this map as well, really denying those A lines, those A lurks. Um, I guess we're seeing a Cypher, though. That is, that is different. I've seen some teams experiment with it. I don't know how much of a fan I am. But it's nice, to, it's nice to see some variety. What would be the differences that we can look out for for the Killjoy versus the Cypher on each side? Um, it feels like Killjoy has better stall, you know, anchoring the C site like normally, while Cypher, uh, you're capable to make more trap plays. You know, there's some camps you could set up traps and be a little more cheesy. Uh, so hopefully we see that out of them. Yeah, I just feel like the Cypher trips are so strong right now. You have to commit so much to clearing them out and even, even like fully understanding how it works. People still get caught with kill trips and stuff all the time. Well, you can see the agents all locked in and ready to go. Our teams are prepared. So let's go ahead and send it over to your casters. These are two individuals who love using their taxes for public infrastructure bills and good old fashioned public transport. You got Mimi and Ender. <laughs> I do love that, famously. Where did that come from? <laughs> no, I know where it came. It's tax oh. day, Chris. Oh, you're right. Did I you did pay your taxes? Week. No, get me off the cast. No, I did last week. We're all okay, good. that's good. I'm We're glad the good. IRS won't shut us down. C9, EG, the game at hand here. We're starting off on Lotus, and we have, I mean, for Cloud9, a bit of a change up from what they were showing in kickoff. In kickoff, in kickoff. yeah. In kickoff, they were playing uh, no Viper. They were playing Vanity on the get-go. They had Zeppo over on the fade. So now, like the dust was talking about, I think Viper is a very necessary on this map. So they're switching over to single initiator, going to the double smokes, which I think is going to be a much better look for them this time around. Let's see how it goes. Cloud9 EG, two teams in the middle of the pack here in America. Cloud9 coming off a big win against Lev. EG coming off of a stomp. Let's see what they can do today. EG need to bounce back strong here and get going right off the rip. It's going to be early B main pressure initially, using that cam to scout out the space while C9 are dominating control over towards Rubble. We'll see whether or not EG want to commit in here. They might just open the door and threaten pinching into that C mound area, breaking some Killjoy utility, and that's gonna put a lot of pressure now on C9. Orb recovered. And a chance to just come in to see here. Only one Molly to stall, but that Viper's on the scene as well. Oxy swings for a bit of a fight against Apol, but it ends in a stalemate as the hit towards the C site. He's again stalled out. 
Still debating what they want to do. There's 55 seconds left, but Nature really wants to get alert going. There's two, almost three players staring him down at the time being. How much does he want to look for here? It's going to come to him to fight the goop in the eyes. Vandy gets the kill. And C9 pushed through. Yeah, they've got to excel into C now. On this other side for EG, just a contact out, maybe getting a little deeper than expected over the top. Nice right clicks from Moose, he'll double up off of it. And draws in trouble yet again, as the new addition shuts it down. Only Apoff left, and Vanity will send a flash his way. This man very much spotted at this point, and in a 1v4, Rooney will end it. Moose just tore it up right there. The right clicks from above, nothing easy you could do to deal with that one. He had a pretty slow start to his debut with a lot of shots on that ice box. But by the time we got to the chaos that was that Ascent fam against Leviathan, he was the guy winning a lot of those clutches, pulling off of a, a lot of those late down. rounds See. to come through for Blood 9. It was like the rounds where he was actually important to the round. He was frying a little bit. It was a little bit of inconsistency, but we definitely like to see him start off hot here in the map number one for Cloud9. Three kills in the first round, getting that way over towards the lockdown as well. Very powerful defensive tool here on Lotus. Yeah, and that is one of the big strengths of the Killjoy over the cycle. The Death was talking about that one, Very but that true. ultimate definitely does a lot more. Sets you up for basically a round win on the retake or a much more secure post plant versus that side for all, which is so much more situational. Yeah, the, the ults, it's definitely a bit of a gap. Although yeah. some nice things about the Cypher you've got, like yeah. if you're looking down front B right now, yeah. you can put a camera to help sort of assist yourself in the lurks a little bit more. You don't need a teammate to guide you into that space. It's a little bit less of a risky approach. EG seeming content in these first couple of rounds just to play front B into C, but the Marshall coming around the corner. Oxy is going to be frying with that one. Easy shots. Oh oh the my. guy's going to double satchel into the oh okay, Oxy. Get your ace. Last man over towards front B. Ghost in hand. Oxy won't get it today. Denied. No fun allowed for Oxy, although he still yeah, all smiles on the stage. Smile. Oh, yeah. That's what I really liked watching this Cloud9 team early on, right? Like, people were asking, who's going to be the vibes guy? You don't have Celsius anymore. But it's just been Oxy. He, he's yeah. such a source of, like, electricity for this team. Every time he goes crazy and around, he's popping off. He looks like like a guy from anime. Even watching them in kickoff. No! <laughs> nice! Good job, Stupid disappointed there, but yeah, even watching him feed off of Vanity and kick off was a whole lot of fun. So, EG, keeping things pretty similar here, going heavy up B at the start of the round. This is just like their pistol. C9's gun's not too favorable, but they've also just been allowed to dominate control over into rubble. C9, if they hold this forward A main space, it's pretty easy to, you know, get back through baby door to push out and clear the flanks like they did before. Repeated the pistol rounds here, and same outcome. Nature shut down, there's no trade in sight. This time, though, I think EG taking a little bit more into their own hands. Again, Apoth out into sight, into B, using that cage to scale up, looking for the peek around the corner. And that's him on to B. He has so much forward space back towards Waterfall now, not able to secure the second kill, but it does pull Moose off the C site, and that should give EG a plant. So Cloud9, one member up. And with not much util to work with, have to make this retake happen. No chances to play off site here. EG are going to need to hold their ground. Oxy's nade could be massive. If he can zone these players off, prevent a trade, could win this round for C9. A blood back in. There's that nade. Superman lines up for A on the swing. Stunning stuff from Super. Leaves Moose in the clutch. New addition was good earlier in this game, but there's a lot to do here. Did he see that gun? Maybe. <gasps> Doesn't know. Now spots him, but jaw drops away, and Moose will too. Run for the hills. Yeah, I can get out of there with the gun, no problem. I mean, Superman really bringing that round back for EG there. Nice little play. Didn't have any support coming in either. Just took a great time and got a couple of kills. One out on the third there, too. So EG equalized a little bit, but I think it's it's going to be a big problem, the fact that they've given up this A main space so consistently. Seeing this play run twice in the first two rounds is something EG are going to have to react to uh, immediately. EG, though, similar setup again, just taking early space towards C mound and leaving that A rubble area to be taken. I guess EG are justifying the way they're, they're playing the start of rounds, saying they're really getting a lot of control in mound and into front B, but I think it limits a lot of what they can do in the mid rounds in terms of pivoting back into the A site without control there. They're doing that. They're also consistently getting this orb over towards C, which is helping their alt economy a little. Oxy just got the showstopper off of it. 
And there's Jaw on the other side. Both these teams harvest their respective orb. There. We'll see if they actually commit in here. We'll see C9 are actually really adjusting into mid because Apoth has gotten this walk up so much, but he just kills Oxy. And that's the showstopper out of the equation. That's pressure into front B. Great lurks from Apoth to start off this game. And the pressure he placed on B means that no oh, one was holding onto that A site. Vanity just shut down by nature. That baby door still closed off. Zappa can't get through. So this is going to be a full retake for C9. Apoth is still hanging out front B. You know he's just waiting for his timing that he can creep up for that one. Spike planted. C9 are taking their time too because they don't want to sort of go into the street. I, th I think they're even just going to save. The pressure of the Lurk is too much for them to deal with in the back. They don't think they can win the 3v4 before that backstab were to come into play. So they don't even try. Yeah, less than 500 cuts on three of these players. By saving these three guns, they should be able to buy everyone and have a full rifle into the next. C9 probably going to be talking about how to you know, deal with this Apoth guy. There are some options they could look. They've been putting the, the forward oh, alarm bot. Check out the map for a second while they just go for the save. They've been going for this alarm bot right behind mound there to get the, the forward information. But you can do ideas like putting a similar alarm out in front B. You can also just try to cross over and play behind the box in front B there as well. Set up some kind of a trap play with a couple of teammates there because Apoth getting all the control he is right now is just too much. Apoth has been like a little a little time capsule for the last year. We saw him on EG in what, 2021? Yeah. 2022 into that season a little bit. He looked quite good then. He was a really consistent controller player, was popping off with that team. And then he went on to the EG reserve roster last year and didn't play a single official with that team. They were scrimming behind the scenes. We saw how good that team was from what pros were saying about the scrim bucks, but we never really knew how good he actually was now. Now he's coming back out. He's on the main EG roster and he's been solid thus far. Yeah, you know, you open up the time caps and it's like, oh, he's still playing Cypher? <laughs> that's, that's some 2021 <laughs> stuff. Not dealing with the Killjoy. Definitely a, a different look here on the map. There. And in terms of how C9 are adjusting to that player, Apoth, it is two players, front B. Off that Killjoy turret, front B, they've got a paranoia they could activate. Look at Moose. They did spam this angle, might think it's clear. Nah, this angle's so hard to play. How thorough is Jojimo? No way. He's not clearing. Moose gets one, swings out, one for one trade. One for one, pretty much just what you're asking for in a spot like that. As the clock winds down, though, we'll have to see what EG want to do. This is the first time Nature's actually gotten a forward position outside of A. And they can't waste too much time because Showstopper can be very meaningful deep in around. C9 still holding on to tools like the Paranoia on the retake, still full kit on that raise. Nature's drawing rotations here. Two players over towards A still. Only Rooney to anchor this C side as EG starts to walk up for the re-exec. EG have loved the late C hits. And they might just wait left. until Toxin nature finds down. something, but now that clock is certainly a problem. And notice Oxy already shifting over towards C. Teleport for Supa. We'll get past that utility. Oxy still has that rocket. 15 seconds safe to get planned down. Oxy could end this That's round out. if he times this right. That fuse timing out. The rocket connects onto one. Trade this there, but Remy's flooded back in. Now there's flashes coming every which way, and EG has no C. path forward. Spike stuck on site. Nature not in time to assist on the fight. Felt like EG just ran themselves out of the out of the game, out of the rounds. They were really hoping that Nature was going to be able to find a kill, and that was going to you know pull more pressure off of the C site. But then once they got down to 25 seconds, they kind of have to commit in there. You know, after this first kill that happened in a minute and five seconds, they just kind of sat in that C space for 30, 40 seconds, running down the clock. Spike. And C9 never really ran into them, never gave them that fight that would have sped up the round. Time to work. Interestingly enough, EG still sticking to the same early round default, still. This 3-1-1, heavy towards mound, and this time, Moose goes for a bit of a hunt and dies for it. Moose has been playing so aggressive towards mound, whether it was the walk across in the previous round, those forward killjoy alarms in so many as well. C9 have been trying to get that forward space that they're allowed to stay so committed onto the A side. EG is just going to expedite into this one. Jaw Satchel's across. Rocket available. But he won't need it for the hit. Yeah, you can hold on to that one for the post plan. You've also got, again, Apoth hanging out in front B for the late backstab potential. 
And C9, they're out of position right now. We're already 10 seconds into the post plant. Zep up on the A site. So by the time he gets over here with his kit, it's going to be pretty late in the day. If Derek times this haunt well, we could do a lot to stop Paranoia. this flood. Flash up for both sides. C9 still stalled out this one. Now a C's being committed. Molly's out for the front of Cloud9, and they pick up two kills immediately. That's that rocket gone. Now 3v4, timer is ticking, Derek is fighting, what an adjustment, it's not enough to find the shot, and now C9 are flooding in with Wingman on the spike, but he's gone, Apoff wins it in the end, out of the chaos. He cleans up, says no, not going for the lurk, C9 we're playing it too slow, regroups with his team and plays a nice post from there. That was a crazy run, let's, let's actually see what happens, because first of all, it's the quick satchel to get this angle, oh my god. He just shot the wall after, after seeing barely a shoulder. Another spam kill there that gives C9 a real chance in the round. All things considered with the limited time C9 had. Baby, let's go, man! Sheesh! It's a pretty solid retake attempt, but 8th Poth just too good at the back end. Him and, uh, him and, uh, and, uh, what was that? Was that Derek? I think so, yeah. I love Potter's claps. And yeah. I see her in the coach camp. Very respectful. Do you think those game. come through on the mic when the timeout's called? You're like, you, you come in with the clap, hype the team <laughs> up. Maybe a little bit. Timeout, speaking of, this time called by Cloud9. Am you going to get in the conversation with them? Yeah, you know, I, I feel like if I'm coming in here as C9, I'm thinking we need to go a little faster on those retakes, right? I, I think they were spending a lot of time watching front B to see if Apoth was going to come in on that lurk again. So maybe on those C, play a little bit quicker to get out into sight. But really, I, I would love to see them take more forward B main space. They were setting up a little bit of a trap play in the previous round that just never had a chance to be bitten on. But uh, a big flex here is going to be the name of the game. First time really seeing Oxy paired up with Vanity on this C side. I think the big problem has been those APOF lurks. Even when he's not actually towards B, it's pulling so much pressure that Cloud9 are struggling to get enough numbers over to C to actually flood retake quickly. Because he conditioned it so early in yes. the half, now he doesn't even have to do anything. He's already set his yeah, team like up for success. Yeah, that last round, he was just with the team, but they still had to slow down because of that threat. We're all ready to go here in this mound space. Ready? Double smoke's placed down, and Supa's probably forced to teleport out of that to dodge away any possible chip damage. I love this adjustment, though, for EG. This is the first time Nature's taken so much fast space. Already reading, this is a heavy C stack. That means Killjoy, very likely. That solo A anchor. And he's really crept off off that one. EG will hold. See if Cloud9 overextend this one. It's had a bit of util. That's the rocket. Joe Stopper over the top connects onto Oxy. And they want to fight more off of this one. Zep is getting spammed out. So much damage. It's enough to take him down. And now there's only one anchor left on this site. Vanity. His teammates dead around him. He'll sit in the smoke and try and make a play. He's ahead of the nightfall. He's damaged and traded. EG pivoting back over towards A. They're gonna bank on, on nature here. Nature may have heard footsteps going up that rope to abandon the A site. That makes this rotate so, so easy for evil geniuses. Reposition that orb deep. Call the boys back through door. 30 seconds left. Moose will not be able to contest this one. And his teammate's gonna be far away. Rooney's going all the way around the world on this flank, but he has to break that trip. So his position, known. Moose has to go quickly. Trying to trying to get a fight planted. while the spike's being planted, and that timing standing. is just so tragic. <laughs> like I actually think he has two kills. If he doesn't get nervous minute. about what was going over in his right shoulder, you can never or know those little off. things. When he broke that trip earlier in this round, so EG have their crosshairs trained on this part of the map. Nature even gonna invest a little bit into a hunt here with. Apoff holding deep. Down. Easy shooting for Rooney. Yeah, Rooney's gonna keep on farming his, his, the best he can on the way out here. I think C9, they're gonna come after that run and say, okay, playing that box and mound is completely illegal. Like, yeah. we've been cleared there every time now. We've played it too much. We're getting spammed now. It's just not actually possible. They're gonna probably keep trying to stay very flexible in those defensive setups because, I mean, the way EG just read exactly what was happening on the map was very nice. They took a good fight into mound. Their lurk timings have been uh, immaculate, I think. Now really getting effective looks in towards the A side of the map. 
It's interesting because we're seeing another game that's a slow start for Jaws Man. He's only gotten one kill with his gun thus far this game. The other was just that rocket kill you saw in the replay. But these lurks from Apoth have been enough to grab these openers, pull the rotates enough that EG is still getting into these sites, even if their entry isn't really picking up those openers. It's great to see when EG can have different players sort of step up here. It's Apoth. For sure. But last week on this map was Nature getting 24 kills. He was the guy going for these lurks. And I think that's probably a big reason C9's prep coming in is let's just flush this guy out of A main. We're not going to let him play the game. And they do have A main again. Gosh. This B side has just been so soft so consistently. Yeah, every round it's just this alarm bot, sometimes the turret, and Apoc is just waltzing in, yeah. destroying it, leaving. Little Step property in. damage, leave. <laughs> just bu breaking it down, and C9, now they just, they've been f four players, five players almost ready to fight into me. how many people are rotating. They're, they are terrified of this guy. Like, Apoc is, is living inside the minds of C9. He's in the walls. He's in the, where is this guy? Oh, but his team are in C, and there's nothing we can do about it because we're not here. Yeah, all those C players got pulled over. I think there was only maybe one Although, nano swarm to stall. To be fair, Mimi, it's all part of the plan because they have to kill Joyle. They've got the thrash. They're ready to go for the retake. Still, look at these weapons. This isn't a gimme They're round. fighting up. Oh, has a name. He's going to try and break this one. Dizzy, broken, locked down, gone. Oxy fighting for his first. Where's those trades? EG missing out on their chances. Now nature in trouble on this site with the fish coming for him. Can he get a fight ahead of it? Absolutely, there's one, but not a second. Rooney will trade, and now Apop has to be the defender for his teammate. Spike plant position isn't great for this squad. They're gonna have to desperately fight forward, desperately go for this one, Superman. It wasn't quite enough. Down to the wire there, Rooney on 39 HP. Assisted by Wingman to win that one out. C9 keep it even with a solid retake. Although we'll see in the replay, uh, EG went for the, the very aggressive play to try and hunt down onto the Killjoy lockdown. But they, they used their paint shells on the lockdown instead of throwing it into this smoke. If they had just thrown the paint shells into the smoke, it would have stopped those players the Stingers from swinging out getting those trades. I think that's around EG, EG should have nice. won. Step, step. Let the Wingman defuse it. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a job. He's got a point. Wigman does two things. He can defuse and he can stun, but... He can plant. Oh, that's... Uh, okay. I kind of in include defuse and plant in the same category because you can't do both at the same time. He can get information. Okay. He's very versatile. Okay, but like really we like him because of the, the planting and the defusing. Sure. I feel like he, he's a specialist, right? He, he, he's got a side hustle, and that's stunning, that's that's clearing, but the main the main job, that's that's all to do with the spike. Timeout now for EG. How do you feel about this timeout? It feels like the overall game plan has been working. They just lost a heavy alt round there. Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously there, I think it's micro errors that sure. end up costing them, at least the start of that post plant. Might just be a good time to, to reset if EG uh, want to really change their pace of how they're playing, because they have never done any rubble control at the start of a round. And coming out of a timeout, you probably don't immediately clue into that, but that's something Potter could seed in where it's, hey, in the last three, two, three rounds of the half, let's do some heavy rubble dives. And from talking to her former players, generally with her timeout, she's like trying to actively call two, three rounds ahead yeah. to actually give something to an IGL. She doesn't tend to do like vibes timeouts, you know? Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of that personally. I think uh, A, timeouts can just give IGLs a lot of time to think about the round sure. at hand. And if a coach comes in with a few different reads, uh, hey, maybe we think that B main space is a little bit weak. Hey, maybe we could refight them into A. That gives more and more ideas for the rest of the half. And here's the change up. After conditioning this pressure on B with the APOP lurk, they'll finally hit off of it. Baby door, there's a bit of a fight over there with Util coming out both sides. And it's in a stalemate, but Jaws Nade, I, I think exactly combined with a fight with Molly there, gets a kill. And they're pinching now with nature outside of rubble. Baby door under siege as Zeppa keeps going into the fight, gets a couple of kills, and must keep fighting. Three kills for Zeppa, and he turns around, taken down by nature, brought into a two on two. Vanity creeping Last through the smoke. Player. Needs to activate quickly. Last man standing. As Amali pushes him out of the smoke, Nature takes him down, and EG secured the round. That is a lovely changeup for EG. Again, we've been talking all game about those APOF lurks, the pressure on B. Now they activate off that conditioning. They've only ever put one person into the B side yeah. before. It was only ever APOF. And I love the ideas of the post plant there too. Instantly sending all that utility into Baby Door, then having a well-timed trap combined with those Maulings again. End up closing this one out. Yeah, we had a, a seize nade snake bite. Yeah. All chucked into door. 
players even over the there trying to dodge round. everything, yeah. Yeah, even in the little late round there, like having the call to go back towards heaven, set up that bit of crossfire there. Good stuff from EG. And here we go, rubble dive. The round after the timeout. Cage Instantly going for that for the change of pace. Same time though, front B. Oxy swings off that after breaking it and is taken down. Rooney unable to trade. See how the cage adds that extra layer there and makes it completely isolated. These last two calls have flown into each other, or flowed into each other yeah. so, so well. You're conditioning towards B. You pop that site. Then Cloud9, try and make a call on their eco round to punish that space. You just have someone deep holding, and for the first time, you go towards A. On one of, like, two rounds this half, Cloud9 hasn't committed into that space. A paw still front B, but actually shut down. That's the Rooney Sheriff guarantee. It's always good for a kill. How good is Vanity's classic? Not that great. We won't hold it against him, though. Bit of a tough buy <laughs> to begin with for C9. And once the utility starts raining down... Okay. Down it's a 2v2. One one enemy John's name takes care of remaining. one, and Rooney has this even. Derek's down to 45 HP. Both players, two body shots on the Vandal left. is enough for a kill. Derek on the rewrap. This Rooney looked to his right. This reposition could be perfect. He's still coming for him. Rooney is trapped. Who swings first? It's Derek and Rooney wins the round. Ridiculous. I mean, Rooney got that kill front B, was able to upgrade from the Sheriff into a Vandal, and then closed it out. Nicely done. The Cloud9 Eco round guarantee? Yeah, the, the Sheriff guarantee. That's what gets you Red Bull Clutch right there for Rooney. One enemy. That kill a little simple, but I like him just holding his ground here. Derek knowing there's no time on the clock. He's got to move into him. C9 having a very successful defensive half here, tied up 5-5. Five to five. George Mo has rocket this round. Looks like they might go back towards B. Oh, Nature saw that guy, Vanity, taken out. Nature's really found the opportunity to heat up here. Showstopper goes into the B site, pinching back towards Baby Door now. Those players stuck in slant. The crunch comes in. Oxy finds the one kill, but quickly traded out. Zeppa can't find his way into Baby Door, which is holding down the left click. How does he get that? It's madness here outside of A. And his kills rain on down. It is somehow EG to find them with a one-man advantage. 1v2 for moves. His second game of the season. To try and close out this clutch. Spike. EG have a crossfire. Jojimo spots him really out. They both swing into Moose. And he gets them all. <laughs> I love it. Moose shuts it down. The salute from Rooney downstage. Clutch. They've got full trust in the man. Back to back clutches. The clutch factor from this Last guy. Last round in the half. And we saw it in challengers. On all the different teams this man was playing on, he was a mainstay in that team. But he'll show up to VCT Americas. Keep the Red Bull clutches going. Not an easy fight there for him either. Had to go back for the first guy after taking him down so low. Yeah, it's really nice control to, to yeah. adjust for both those guys. Placing swamp grenade. Strange final round, though. We've got a judge on Oxy with a showstopper. It's a half buy for EG, just forcing it as much as they can. And Rooney gets his revenge. Gets it for Moose. Remember previously, it was Jojimo going for the quick peek there, spamming Moose through the corner. That unlocks the Viper's pit now. Seasight is out of commission for EG. Bring them down. And look at front B as well. There's a Killjoy turret that would watch the walk up from APOP. And then you've got a Paranoia down this line. That's how they Here deal with comes. the man. Trap play active. Oxy, Rocket. He's not looking directly below him, but he's got a judge in APOP's face. APOP still wins it somehow, and it's an even trade after all the chaos. I know I was saying a lot about, oh, C9 should just, you know, fight front B and deal with APOP. I, apparently, you just can't beat him. Cover going down. Face your Unkillable. Fear. Should just avoid it. Is this a fake into B? A bit of one at least. That's Where are you? gonna pull two players. Only this gecko to anchor on A, and Zappa's just holding a deep off angle. If they contact up, this could get quite dangerous for Cloud9. I mean, the turret still didn't see anyone step forward, so C9 aren't fighting too hard on it. 
Always the option to pivot back into B, though. EG have left. Derek in front. They teleport into Baby Door before breaking that one down. But still, two players ready to go. Derek finds the first. Now Rooney takes his opportunity. Coming in, Amali onto the planter. A little bit of damage as Vanity takes his opportunity. Out from heaven, finds the first with the support of Rooney. Wingman getting into the action, too. Pit to help the flood. And it slows down for a moment as EG creep forward inside of the gas. Superman is lost. Only two survivors for EG forced back into that tight choke. And C9, as they flush out, they know where these two players are going to be. But the, the spam is going to be absolutely devastating. Nature plays through it one on one. One HP, but it's Vanity on top. C9 takes seven in the first half. Three clutch rounds in a row for C9. This game comes down to the wire, but they come out with an excellent defensive side there. Answering a lot of the questions EG sent their way. I think throughout that one, doing a lot better job in the late round of dealing with this V control. And especially winning out in these clutches. <laughs> and you see Oxy on the stage there. The guy is so emotional for this team in, in like the most positive yeah. way. Bringing the hype, bringing the vibes. You absolutely love to see it. But <laughs> neither coach happy after that one. But let's hear a little bit more about Oxy and find out why he's so comfortable on that stage with the C9 roster. Um, obviously, I have one of the best, like, flex players and best IGLs out there, in my opinion. And they give me, like, they just tell me what to do and I do it. That's all I gotta do. But I don't have to think. They actually tell me not to think, so I don't think, and they tell me what to do, and I follow. That's all I do. <laughs> He's just <laughs> like me, for real. Not a thought Maybe in Maybe stop head. thinking when you cast. I, I just don't. don't. Don't do it. Good. Good. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> I absolutely... I mean, Oxy's just wild. He is wild up there. Having too much fun at times. But you just know enough what? enough fun. Just enough fun. The perfect amount... Cloud9 can have a little fun as a treat. Mm. Agreed. Especially, hey, look, they, they started off the, uh, the week taking down Leviathan. Now, solid first half. I mean, winning seven rounds on your on your, on your your defensive side. The worst defensive map in the pool. Not too shabby. EG, on the other hand, suffered a really disappointing defeat last week. What and was now, that second map? 13-3? We, we don't talk about it. 13-3 on Icebox. That's what it was on their choice. But now is where they have to show that resiliency and battle back, right? They've got a couple of minutes to reset going into the second half. They know they're at a significant disadvantage here. But if you think back to what Shazam was actually saying on the desk before the before the game started, you know, they are playing that Cypher. Now that we're sure. seeing the Cypher move over to defense, you've got ideas for the trap setups. What can you run off of the camera? Harder to stall out those sites, but easier to play for like trip kills on the site. So Apoth can get a little bit more active, I think, with the fights he wants to take around those. I really want to see more out of John in this half, especially with the Cypher with those trap plays. So much of that is going to be built around his nade, him swinging off of it, going for these fights. The guy was a superstar last year, winning champs with evil geniuses. And thus far here in America's this year, it's been a bit more of a struggle. Pretty bad first game in stage one. D9 will satchel into B though, Oxy takes this space, so the task of retaking is on EG. Nade for Jojmo in, Zeppa will commit this plan, but everyone here is already ready to fight. Zeppa has to flood through heaven because paranoia pushes him into Derek. How much can Derek do? Two up against him, he doesn't find a single kill, but nature can get him a little bit better. Oxy, low in HP, right clicks, missing out, time being fought, but now it's a fight into main vanity. One for one, three players Last left, but they're player dropping Sandy. one after another. Four and Rooney's so far away from this. Was reflunking all the way back through A. He had a molly lined up from over there too. The nerd. Can he win the round now? Swings into him, doesn't hit a shot. EG, massive pistol win. EG got moving so quickly on that retake. Like, the, the craziness of the position, we'll see it in the replay. Because C9, after planting, they pushed for heaven control. At the same time, EG are flooding out from Baby Door, wrapping straight behind him and getting that crunch. It was really nice, right? Like. C9 were getting One. kills, they got pinched on, then EG are also pinching through into B main, hunting out those main players. That is a, a very strong post-plant B protocol at work. And that's what you expect from EG. 
Hoxie's forcing a guardian into this. Holy! Half armor guardian. What can the youngster do? I mean, he can fry. We know that. As long as he doesn't think. That's mission number one. Hoxie, don't think. Just shoot. You Not thinking about the future of his economy. Already a good start. Yeah, just, just ignore it completely. It doesn't matter. Hey, if you hit your kills, so that's what matters. You've got your smokes out! Why do you have your smokes out there? Questionable. You want to explain that to me? I assume he'd been holding the one way and didn't think anyone could have gotten in past it. And the time he went back to actually pull out the smoke is the timing Oxy took, but I don't know. That's brutal. That's the most generous I can be. Cloud9 still not secure in this round. They're gonna hit into this C site. APOC, three players all ready to go, and that star is seized. Huxy tries to escape, but he has no business getting out of that one. Jaw finds a kill on the other side, and well, the round started sloppy. Meteor cleaning house now. For their elite agents. All good. Derek, not impressed by their elite agents. It's true. Yeah, so he was, up, he was resetting the one-way smoke. Yeah. yeah. I, I think Oxy was in A main during that time and just he took just it the, the perfect yeah. timing there. Yeah. That one-way is also pretty finicky to get it right on. You have to like walk forward yeah. and back a little bit to do it. Like that's one of the one-ways in the game that takes a little longer to place. Giving him a, a bit of a break. We can forgive and we can forget. It never happened to Mimi. You that's go into true. the next round. It's all good. C9 opening up with some mound control. Both teams actually really trying to dominate the space early on in their attacking halves. Yeah, very similar starts for both these squads on their attack side. I think that when you fight into either front B or front C, what you can do is just by tapping that door, you flush out any aggressive forward play from the defensive side. You instantly get to scout out that space. It's not really the same thing with Rubble as attacking into that space. You can only really go through one choke. You see part of the power of this Cypher, that cam all the way up is going to be pretty hard to break. And Honestly, something you're not often thinking about. It's like thinking about when EG was playing like Sova on Fracture. There's certain yeah. maps where you're used to checking for a dart, checking for a cam, and there's maps where you aren't so used to that. So it's a, it adds a little extra element in. That it does. C9 adding that rubble reclear. Mosh lands on the top here, also flushing out back sight. You see the combo come in from the Viper spit as well. C9 still playing things slowly. Notice they've actually left Vanity. Hanging out over towards C. They've got an alarm bot front B to make sure that the defense can't take any forward space there either. And now they've actually left a little Viper onto door. Superman has a paranoid as he fight through onto this one. Nade to combo. Rooney gets a gap and he escapes. Rooney's in the matrix right now. All the utility around him. But what it's done is it's pulled out players from C because he was the only one that scaled forward to hit the door. They saw so much utility on that side. EG over rotate and the plant goes down. That's also big retake tools oh, gone. Wow. All they have to get back in is going to be the haunt for EG. Now down a member as well. How do EG get back in here? It's going to be a full flood into Waterfall. Three players go there. Superman going to slow play to main, but a good spam kill starts things off well for EG. He's having a flash over. No util. His job just to fight at this point. Molly's in front of him. He'll run straight through them. Vulnerability is good to convert onto that kill. And all the players now standing off site, relying on this spam, this spray to get it done. Vanity's TPing up top. Uh, ridiculous what? scenes. And now they just ran through and Derek's killed them all. How's that happen? I have no idea. C9, it looks like they were playing pretty aggressively on site. They had a Viper Orb that they were playing with from back then. But then three players fall off site in this rolling defense. Right, because look, they're playing up forward, but once Oxy fell down, I think everyone else fell off site. They realized they didn't actually have any control. They had to fight back through here. My question exactly. That's a good question. <laughs> Potter is pogging. And Imi is not happy. No, he's actually calling a timeout. Yeah. It's three rounds in a row. The bonus secured for EG. First thing, 
I think less so than the post plant and how, how they played that. I think you're coming in, you're saying, uh, I, the way we manipulated the map, the map was good, right? Like uh, all the control that was done from Rooney out of a rubble pulled those players off the site. So we can keep playing like that to get those players over rotating for a good late round pivots. Very similar to that first EG time that the, the crux of the matter is the micro. Yeah. And then it comes to solving the post plant. I think first idea from them would be, actually we need to bunker down a little heavier on site. I didn't see what util, there might've been too much util thrown all the way into the back of site for them to actually play out. There was a lot of committed early to support. I think it was Zeppa who was solo on that site. And that is sort of one of the reasons why you see so much of the rays, the, the omen for the paranoia, the seas from the fade. You can throw a ton of stuff into that back bend area, that water area, right when you flood out from main. That's a tough round to lose for C9. They had a good advantage coming out of their defensive side. Now down around EG, have the momentum. They're in a good position here. That they are. Switching up their setup a bit. It's actually a late Cypher setup, so I think that coming in the timeout was a late pivot. Bring them down. To change the passive side of the map over towards A. What do you think of the solo gecko on this map? Because, I mean, you see there, there's a lot of sense where the Dizzy's just going to get broken when you don't have use of the combo with it. I think it's totally fine. I think because there's so many agents that are necessary, there's like four agents that are necessary, and that's everything besides the gecko. The gecko can kind of be a slot of its own, where sure. it could fine be a fade, too. could be a sky. But uh, gecko is so good because of the low cooldown on this map for those fast second wave hits onto a site and like this. It here. Yeah, you use your first flash, 10 seconds later, you're already into me. That is a good nade from Jaw. And a little bit too quick on the refresh for that one. Zeppa caught it with util in hand, and Superman now has kind of weaseled this way back into okay, a very awkward situation. Oxy's going to pick up a gun off that, too. Root. And now they're running back through A, but the spike is down. That's the real issue of this round. Clearing back into Baby Door with a Marshall. Yeah, good luck. Don't think that's happening. But Oxy's a little too obvious, so he doesn't want to speed left. up too much himself. Now they've got to consider that wall timing, and they do look for Baby Door. Nature's trained on this angle. Molly at his feet. He's just going to spray, though. 10 HP. Finds himself a gap. Apoth now, the next level of that support. Oxy comes in and picks up that gun. Only goes one for one. There's just no time. This round is over. EG shut down the Antica. Yeah, that was always going to be a hard one for C9. Made him work with a great timing taken from Oxy to push up towards heaven, towards spawn. I think that fast satchel in to dive on that player and get yeah. the opener. It was very nice. And ended up winning that fight with a stinger from kind of long range. Yeah. Right here, boom. I think Derek already a little low there. He, he must have been. That kill was way too fast. <laughs> People are going to be calling for the stinger nerfs if that was on 150. There's no way. <laughs> Another setup now with Cypher Viper over towards A from EG. Maybe reading some ideas here from C9 because they've got Thrash, they've got the Showstopper too. So actually holding onto a side is going to be really hard. It's actually a front B setup at the moment for EG. They can paranoia out, they can open up this door and really fight into mount if they want. Yeah, this is a trap play. They've got a showstopper of their own. Oh yeah! Joel pop that off the, the Noya. In comes a thrash oh, over top. George Mo midair! He connects, but Five Nine have traded this one even. And Moose activates the lurk at just the right time. Moose having those rounds and Apoth can't match it this time. Rooney was hanging out. Although not unwinnable. Nature was a beast on this map last week and he goes for his timing. Brings it to a one on two, but the paranoia proves too much. Moose secures the round for C9. Eight to nine. That's a real big round to pick up for them. And I think that really the important matter of that one was that Moose reflank. He's been sitting bottom, be really patient in that endeavor. This play was so perfect. Going over the thrash, getting the kill and the trade. Like, EG, that was a perfect play. This is the problem. Like, and there's not much you can do about that. Yeah. I think uh, we were I mean, just even the about kill to he see. Catches there is like a half second before yeah. that player gets back into base. Literally, Derek had just cast his ultimate, was oh, about to pull out his gun and turn it. and fight that angle. That was a one second window, like you said. Odin spam parent with the Roomba to get Judge Mo and Orb here. I love how much EG is putting into getting this showstopper online. They have a lot of plays built around it. It's actually, sorry, it wasn't the Nightfall he used that previous round. Another piece of utility. So holding on to that here. <laughs> we see the Mosh coming in. Superman's got a TP out. Using the enemy's Viper wall to his own advantage there to aid in the escape. 
Is there a discount jet smoke plus dash? But this is the power of the gecko like we're talking about because every single area on this map sort of requires you to fight for one piece of initial space whether that's rubble or whether that's mound and you use that piece of utility and then you can go for the sight hit and usually it takes you about 10 15 seconds before you can set that one up so this bit is gonna be a bit problematic for c9 get it. moose has the lockdown and he's actually gonna slam it Alarm bot will they're stop going anyone from flooding nah, forward. Nah, I, they're going back A. Look at that. They left it. They left Rooney hanging out towards Rubble. Already on the rotations. 30 seconds left. EG are playing a weak A site, but that's only for now. A Nightfall front B hits nothing, so now they can get that pivot going to A. They've re-cleared B, they've re-cleared C. They know this is an A hit coming in. These players have actually caught a great timing. Super is stalling out. He still has his paranoia. Plant coming down from the wingman. 10 seconds for him to accomplish that. Goal, and Broken. he is dead. 10 seconds left. Spike on the ground. Jojimo swinging forward. Derek paired up with him. Spike down. The synergy a. is there. E. G. What a reply. Not fooled at all, were they? I mean, they were initially, but they just, they're so quick to re-clear. And Superman does enough to stall out just for that five Jesus. seconds that they make it back. But I don't think they I don't think they were fooled. I think okay. they had three players on C, but that was for other reasons. Because Second those players left. were rotating over sure, sure. and had that hit come in. But then immediately they're making the call to use the nightfall. Like they're using a big ultimate just for scouting, but it was a really good choice. Yeah, and I mean if you have those players set up in waterfall, the rotates on this map between B and C are so quick that you can re-clear B and B at yeah. A within like 10 seconds. And between A and B, right? If yes. that had hit any player's front B, they then are thinking, oh, it's a crunch through baby door, and they can set up to heavy flood into B. And I think that's credit to how well EG is calling off Derek's util to have those super fast Ooh. rotates on defense. And, okay. I mean, super on kind of a weird anti-half buy is just owning them in main. I mean, this is some, like, just confident stuff from EG that we haven't seen much. It's mostly there. been these slow mid-rounds. Here, they're just winning out the duel on the rubble fight. I do think the confidence comes down to there not being a lot of rubble fights going their way. Sure. Rooney, though, upgraded from that sheriff. Can't quite find the shot, though. Does EG go up to 11? Again, these EG kind of pace changes where they're investing more heavily into these faster plays in both halves have been perfectly timed. It was round 10 and 11 off that Potter timeout where they win two in a row with a change of pace. Here, they win a crazy round on the slow rotation game and then they send it down lobby. C9 need to, to make an adjustment of their own here. They, they used all their big power ults. Yeah, they've got a Viper's Pit. They've got the Omen Ultimate, but to actually blow up in a site, that's just not going to be available to them. They've just got to play solid Valor from here on out, ulting into that B site to click quick clear. Rooney comes around the corner. Actually, that's nature. Instantly taken down. Oxy creeps into Waterfall. He has a fight against Apoz, and he turns oh. just in the nick of time. Welcome Again, that wingman won't be allowed to plant the spike for free. Uh, he's going to see. running to C. Yeah, he is. Just through this one, though. Rocket all the way through into C. He's around the world. Just going to keep running for more. This means Oxy is now isolated, or at least he was until Rooney finds the time. Most normal attack side Lotus round here. Ridiculous. The full exec in debut with Omenold, and we're sprinting through water to plant on C. Superman has a paranoia, and he's looking into front beat to clear that out first, but also to paranoia and her to pinch back into the C site. He's on his own, and so is Derek for the retake. Where does he send that Noia? Front sight. Last Moods. Standing. Caught by that one, but Rooney wasn't. And Supa just is going to save this one. Or maybe go back for some damage, but the round's over. Yeah, at this point, it doesn't super matter. Well, he's not great for C9. Super matter? That's not what I was doing. Mimi, don't try to put words in my mouth. I'm not trying to <laughs> make bad puns. Said. No! Words mean That's things. a normal thing. Okay. Okay. Super matter isn't even like a sentence. Yeah, it is. It like, doesn't matter. You could say Giga Matter. No. Omega Matter. No. All of these things are real things you can say. Eleven to nine. Moving on. This game matters. It does. Honestly, a lot. Especially for EG after that opening loss. What a crazy round from C9. Killed. Rooney's been looking sharp yeah, today, scary. too. I'm more swift there. I don't know what happened. Francis. Francis. We're quick. Over into the safe side of the map. Four players here from Evil Geniuses. 
They've got a buy, and C9 are overcommitted. We're swinging into line. Superman gets two and keeps on going. EG dominate the space. Giacomo gets two. And C9, they lose the spike off the play as well. Jojimo's back. back. Two rounds now where he's just fighting into A lobby, lobby and his utility is destroying people. Kill with the paint shells, two with his gun. Apparently even 30 seconds into the round and it's over. The rubble fights have not been working for C9. We can see it again here. That setup from EG is really nice. In case you're wondering, Moose thought he could go in for the 1v3. Failed at the end, and that gives EG 12. And that could actually make a difference. Look at the buy now from C9. Moose could have tried to save that. It would have been hard to save the rifle yeah. with five players alive, but... EG were definitely going to go hunt that one. Could have at least tried. Yeah, there it is. Jogamo gets the 4K. Good easy, stuff from easy. him. Remember, started this game, what, like, two and six? Something like that? Slow yeah. start, and he's recovering. It's wild that C9 aren't giving up, though. They're going back into another rubble fight. A little bit softer this time, though. Zeppa showed the dizzy outside of C. Yeah, more of that kind of late contact in once you hear if there's initial util. Yeah. Oh, and now and they down. know there's some kind of a trap in front of B. Jogmo looking to play it. Moose is stuck over in the corner. He's got to fight his way out with a stinger. That is not a fun position to be in. Cloud9 will excel into A now. Nature will just escape towards heaven, so it's going to be a full retake for EG. Where's his rocket going? I don't think there's a target for Oxy to find here unless he maybe walks up the rope, tries to wiggle his way into no a spawn. Way. And no somehow, way! No way! A jaws in the air! What a reaction from him! He knows the race rocket, not going to lose out to that one. Blood back into the site now. Superman loses his fight. EG, this round starting to fall apart, but Jaws active. Rocket up, finds one. Derek on the trade. The world champion Rays makes himself known in those last few rounds as EG take their opponent's map pick. EG stepping into the chaos in that last round a little bit. Giacomo heating up with the showstopper, brings it back under control. I mean, that was a defensive half if ever I should. Did they lose two rounds? Yeah. Two rounds on defense? And, and well, but that does not happen very often. This yeah. is the most attack sided map here in America. Yeah. I mean, and it was after a, a poor first half, if you think all things considered. EG only got five on their own attack. Moose was looking super hot towards the start. For me, the highlight was whether it was off the Cypher Cam or other pieces of utility, all the variations of trap plays EG had with Jojmo re pushing for space in the mid round on defense. It was nice. And I will say, even though EG were down at the half, I think they still had a lot of good things showing for them. The yes. way they were calling in the mid rounds, and uh, especially Apoth. Like, he doesn't finish the game with a ton of kills, but the first half... I mean, every one of those kills was a round winner. Dude, he was he was like a, a, the scary monster in the walls against C9. <laughs> like, they had no idea where he was. He was just crushing front B over and over. And C9 could not figure out how to deal with it. Well, a much better game here from EG compared to their debut in stage one. But the job's not done yet. Second map coming up Job after done. this break. Look what I've just made. The perfect pearl. Not too bad, but check this out. <sighs> Whoa, a true Venus clam. Red Bull gives you wings. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin. In this series, I'm gonna walk you through attack on Pearl. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle. You're gonna be able to fight this.